pull up a chair in the Marvel Champions Lounge and join your host, Moose and Ghost Dog. Welcome, everybody, to our first uh, podcast, episode one, with Moose and Ghost Dog. Hello, Ghost Dog. How are you, man? Wow, you know, chilling, uh, getting ready to uh, do some more content, but first talk about the Marvel contest of everything with you guys today. Yeah, man, me too. I'm excited, man. I'm excited to get this going. Uh, I feel like I've been preparing for this for a while. Uh, you know, all the Marvel contest knowledge <laughs> and uh, just keeping up with all the news. Um, but yeah, so here we go. I'm Moose. Um, and I, you know, just real quick, right off the bat, I'm Moose. I've been playing the game since like December 2015, four or five years. Um uh, I made a few alliances. I was leader here, there. Uh, I guess, if anything, I could say I uh, helped create a community of like two, three, four hundred people at one point in time uh, called the Symbiotic Empire. Uh, took a little break, kind of came back now. So, you know, just ready to, you know, make some new friends out in the Marvel communities, learn more about RPG games with MROC. Uh, and just also, you know, learn more about MCOC too. So, what about you, man? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, Ghost Dog, you guys know me. Uh, if you haven't known me, I'm, I'm on YouTube, do different content, mostly crystal openings, but trying to expand my uh, my horizons there. I started taking the game series seriously back, and I know the exact date I started taking it seriously. It was March 20th, 2017, <laughs> and the reason why that's important is it's my granddaughter's birthday, oh, and that okay. was the first day I seriously started taking the game seriously. Uh, and join and join an alliance. Nice. Um, met some good friends there. We are actually still friends today. Oh, nice. um, near future clear content I'm planning on working on. I started Act Six Point Four last night. Got all the way to Six Four Four, so I'm looking to finish that up. Hopefully today, if I have time. Um, and then, um, if, if, you, if everybody knows that my most uh, wanted champ right now is Doom, and that's why <laughs> I crap about it because everybody knows I want it. So. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, speaking of Doom, uh, the Four Horsemen, right? That's kind right. Of the buzz that's going been going on lately. Right. As far as they go, um, how out of the four, who do you have? I, I have, have Doom, which sucks. I don't have Doom, <laughs> but I do have Aegon, uh, rank five, sixty five, C two hundred, and I also have Human Torch as a six star rank two. Nice, nice. So out of the yeah, out of the four, I have let's see, I have Human Torch uh, right now. He's sitting at rank four. Okay. Uh, five star and uh, unduped, unfortunately. And then what? Aegon. I don't have Aegon. I don't have Doom. And Nick Fury. I do have him right now. He is duped. I had a an awakening gem. I got to be able to use on him. Yep. You so only he's need one. Sitting, yeah. Right. Exactly. You only need one. So. Yeah. He's uh, he's sitting at rank three right now because my latest rank up was Warlock. And gosh, he's been great, man. He, the utility that he has. I've been enjoying him, especially yeah. since I have Guillotine uh, 2099. That goes, they go great together. So. Do they? I don't have Guillotine 2099, but I do have Warlock as a 565. So, yeah. Nice. So, I understand the, uh, the the love of his utility. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm still looking for Aegon and, you know, you know, the, the, all, the all Doom. Aegon um, and Doom, are, I think, are two necessities for, like, certain content like the Abyss and things like that. Yeah, you can for get sure. by most other things without one or the other, uh, yeah. but they do make things in the game a lot easier. Oh, dude! I, you know, ever since um, I got GT ninety nine, you know, it was funny. So I, I was never really good at like holding combos and things like that. I've definitely gotten a lot better at it, but I did. Uh, I still need to do LOL. There's still a ton of content I need to clear because most of my time was building a community. Right. So. Um, since I've taken my break from kind of building that community, I was able to my my rating jumped like two hundred k in like ninety days. It's it's been crazy, man. Yeah, but there's still a lot of content I need to clear. LOL. I did my first path with uh, Venom the Duck, <laughs> and oh. honestly, it wasn't bad. It was honest. It was pretty good. I got you know, I spent a, the first few fights were frustrating getting the right you know uh, buffs, but other than that, right. Bad. It went well. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I did I did my first LOL path with Aegon. 
And okay. I, I haven't been back since. <laughs> not, that I, <laughs> yeah. not, not, not that right. I couldn't clear it cheap and easy. No. It's just that so much other content came out since I since I pulled it. Yeah. Or since I did it, it's like, ah, I got more to do. Um, and LOL's rewards from path two to path six are nothing. So it's yeah. path one, you get good rewards. Path seven, you get good rewards. And everything else in between, it's kind of like, eh. Yeah, same here. Yeah, no. So I'm, I'm working on, uh, since I just got Warlock up to rank five, I'm going to, you know, pair him. And I also pulled six star Ultron. So that whole team is going to go pretty well. And uh, I've, I've already done the initial clear in variant, uh, was it three? Three? Three. three. Yeah. And uh, so I'll just go ahead and I'll probably be exploring that. I'm going to be uh, grinding some arena and stuff. I'm actually going to be starting a channel. Uh, so, you know, y'all can join me while I grind for all the resources for all that and whatnot. So sweet. check that out later. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Well, yeah, man. So uh, what uh, about, so about, that's about us pretty much. Uh, well, yeah. Get to know us a little bit. So, and then as far as what we'll be covering with this podcast, uh, you know, really, I think, feel like we've kind of already gone over a little bit, but like most of the the headlines for, you know, MCOC and MROC, you know, that's really yeah. what we're going to be covering over here. Um, all the happenings, all the goings on, like today, for instance, you know, um, headlines today, Seton, he released, you know, his, his, uh, Google spreadsheets, <laughs> you know, one of his Google spreadsheets today, which I'm a fan of because I love Google spreadsheets. <laughs> they, you know, they keep everything nice and neat, get a little OCD, you know, it, <laughs> all the, the leaders and, you know, you led, you know, you know, it keeps everything easy. The easier, the better for the rest of the alliance. For everybody leader. else, yeah. But he did his, uh, he released uh, Hoodoo Awaken drop today for March 2020. So I feel like that would be pretty good. Everybody should go check that out. Um, but yeah, and then no real news going on in MROC, but you know, we'll cover it. We'll I mean, it, it, it. MROC is the news itself. Or we're, we're still awaiting. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're still awaiting a release date, but uh, for sure. Right. We did get kind of a, we got a, we got a small teaser about it. Yeah. Um, in, in, a, in this, this upcoming month's event. So we'll be talking about that here. Oh yeah. With about the new that yeah. For sure, yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, what we'll be covering, you know, where else you'll be able to find us. So we're going to be releasing these podcasts on, you know, all the popular podcast places. You know, uh, you can also interact with us on Twitter. I'm sure you're already following Ghost Dog. Uh, you know, uh, go ahead and follow them there. Uh, we'll have a website coming up, too, which more of that will be kind of released. You know, as it comes along, you know, we're just kind of getting this going. Uh <laughs> You know, this is uh, pretty new, so yeah, we'll get it going. Yeah, we'll get it up and going. We'll be trying to record on Sundays and, you know, probably release them every Monday. Try to get these out to you guys every Monday. So, you know, you got something to listen to, get you through this week, get you through the week, you know. So, right. right. Speaking also of dates and stuff, also wanted to clarify, it did look like, uh, speaking of news, what's his name? Uh, Frontline, Dan Frontline. I love mm -hmm. those guys. Those guys are great. They bring in all the good news, but I know he clarified the other day on Twitter about the Hulkbuster beta. Right. How it was like kind of confusing where the signups and then, you know, it was signups lasted and then we all kind of thought it was going to start. Right after. Right. After, right? Yeah. And it, does, it says running, but it's actually not yeah. running. It's actually <laughs> like now the waiting period. Yeah, right. It's running in however many days. Right. But it's starting, what, it's starting April 6th. Yep. So if you guys signed up for it and you're going to do it, April 6th will be the day that you'll be able to take that uh, new Hulkbuster out for a spin in the beta. Mm -hmm. You looking forward to that? Um, only have a rank one or rank two four star. But yeah, I'm going to still okay. take a look at that. I'm, I'm probably going to in the beta rank them up and uh, nice. see, see if we can get out of that. What about you? Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty excited about it actually. Um, I have a rank. I have a five star. He's duped. I think I duped him a couple times. Um, but you know, I have the cool thing. Why I'm kind of excited about it is hopefully, just like all the other champs, you know, Old Man Logan, Colossus, they got great, you know, buffs. They yeah. really did. A, they did a fantastic job. I mean, now yep. they're viable champs. You know, yep. that you can use that everybody's probably got sitting on their roster, not doing anything. So, mm -hmm. pretty great much. for them to kind of revamp. I'm, I'm loving it. But yeah, so I have a, I think a 2016 Tech Gem. 
Uh, so I'd be able to rent uh, for three to four that I got through one of the variants. Okay. So, you know, I was going to use it on Ultron, but I just got, because I have a rank three Ultron, but. You just pulled that four star. I just, I just got a six star. So, you know, really no, star, point, yeah. Yeah, no point in using him on that. So no, no, I actually got one of those too. And I already used it on Ultron, but I don't okay. have the six star version. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully he's cool. You know, just even more beef for going into variant three and whatnot. Other news, we have uh, incursions. There you go. Yeah. Incursions. <laughs> uh, right around the corner. We finally got the release date on that. Um, I know I like skills put out a video, um, but then we got it confirmed uh, that uh, April 8th is supposed to be the release date for the new incursions that are replacing dungeons. So I know that uh, Dorky Diggity Dave, he talks about them. He talks about how much he hated dungeons. <laughs> <laughs> but he loves the new incursions. So nice. to have someone who didn't like dungeons turn around and say they love the incursions is kind of like, okay, got to check it out. Now, I did dungeons, okay. and my friend SKO drugged me to do them. <laughs> um, did you enjoy them? No. <laughs> no, I did not. I felt like it was 20 to 30 minutes of my day that I had to do something. I, I, I had to fit time into For sure. to do this, to knock it out. Um, for the uh, for the material to try to get another five star, um, that and RNG for five stars for me have not been great. Oh yeah, you know lately for me they've been fantastic, but starting they suck. So really excited to see what those were about. I know they were supposed to have everybody up to Canada's offices. Is I think it was this Wednesday they were supposed to be. It was like Legacy, Captain Bay, wow. Katie Candy. Um, a couple other of the uh, content creators, they were all supposed to meet up there um, and go over the incursions, play it out, give their thoughts on it, things like that, um, before the week week later release date. So now with everything going on, uh, which we you know everybody's on a no travel no travel thing, so they're not they they've canceled that, but we still have they still are going to launch the incursions on April eighth. I mean, thank goodness, because it just gives us something more to do, you know? <laughs> right. Uh, although after April 8th, you know, we'll already have, you know, 26.1 out, right? Yep, 26.1 drops. Um, so 26.1, a whole new world. Uh, so Karina has found the Nexus power within the battle realm uh, that is rich with astral and iso energy uh, with this newly found resource. She hopes to restore Dr. Strange's astral form back into his body, allowing him to come back to help the contest once again. So uh, for those who haven't, you got you can find that on the forums. But um, more in depth, we, they, they have two new champs going to come out. And uh, most of you probably have done more looking and digging into this than, than I have seen that I've been prepping for other things. Uh, yeah, yeah, you've been prepping for that 6.4, man. Yeah, like, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly, right now I'm stuck at the champion at 6.2.6, 6, so I'm, I'm, yeah, no, I've been doing a little bit of research and, <laughs> and you know, watching everybody's videos out there and, uh, you know, which thank you for them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, those champions, you know, uh, the champions, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to them, honestly, at the end of the day. They look like they're pretty good champions. Um, you know, everybody's which one? Yeah. yeah, I'm really excited about the, about the Sorcerer Supreme. Okay. Um, because uh, listening to Legacy uh, talk about the, uh, from the notes that he had from the uh, content creator program, uh, yeah. it sounds like she is a ramped up version of uh, Symbiote Supreme. Yeah, I mean, honestly, from the sounds of it, it sounds like she's like a Symbiote Supreme mixed with, you know, almost like Doctor Strange in, in kind of a way where they both kind of have the same, you know, they both kind of have the same vibe mixed in between. But yeah, she definitely sounds like she's going to be power control. Uh, she's going to be getting a ton of power, which mm -hmm. is going to be, you know, crazy awesome, you know, because that's always great. The only, I guess the only downsides to her are she's fragile, right? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Generally, generally when you have a champ that has all that, they have to be somewhat... Right? fragile right i mean in in some way right like uh, gt99 i mean at the end of the day if she gets hit a couple times but there's a lot of utility there so i mean i totally get it all the newer champs they're really putting in a lot of work to them a lot of uh you know you gotta you know i guess you kind of got to play them in certain ways and you know i think at start i i don't know how the sorcerer supreme is gonna you know and it really honestly it's it, 
I don't know how I like I stopped saying sorceress supreme. Mm-hmm. It was funny. I was watching Katie Candy's uh, one of her streams the other day. She was talking about it. Now I can't I can't stop. Like every time I go to say it, I try to say sorceress, you know, but uh, I don't even know why they did that. I wonder yeah, why. She's de- it's definitely a, a, a female based it's looking weird. character. So it should have been sorceress, <laughs> right? Uh, so I wonder if they like changed some stuff at the end there or something. But probably. anyways, yeah, I, you know, I think I think she'll be to start. I think she'll be kind of, you know, people are going to be weary. But once you finally definitely get her uh, play style, I think she's going to be definitely clearing some content. Yeah, yeah, um, should be, sure. should be great. Um, and then we also have Storm Pyramid X. Um, I didn't watch as much about her um but i believe she still has like weather control capabilities kind of like storm does yeah at, gonna, at, at a better level she's gonna be absolutely crazy man. it sounds like she's gonna be the one who is really this month's gonna bring the power um i mean honestly it seems like they've been having this little pattern where they'll have some defensive champs and then some attack champs one month, and then the next month defensive champs. So I think this month these are definitely going to be some attack champs. Uh, but Storm, I was actually I was really pumped on her when I feel when I saw that she was coming because uh, early on in the game I uh, have a rank five OG or rank four OG Storm. Um, you know, back then you know, rank four was the top, and I only had you only had a few you know five stars, so you did what you could. I had a rank four Winter Soldier. He was my first one. And then OG Storm, she was my second one. So I was looking forward to Storm Pyramid X because, like, the synergy was probably going to be cool. And it seems when they release these new champs, they'll release synergies that, you know, give a little extra something to the OG champ. And, I mean, so what her thing is, is she gets resistance to blood and poison and things like that to her power. So the more power she has, the more resistance she'll have to those things. So kind of underwhelming to me, honestly, it seems. But um, again, we'll see how it all plays out. But honestly, it sounds like she's going to be a super heavy hitter. Uh, Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, it's going to be super cool. Other than the champs, you know, um, there's the whole kind of factions are back, right? And, and that's and that's kind of where we we lean into the tie the tie in uh, yeah. of MCOC and MROC. Yeah. Um, right. So it's kind of interesting how they're doing it because um, these are clearly look like MROC characters. Oh yeah, right. That are going to be in MCOC. And I and I kind of wonder how many how many more times they're going to do that. Like I know they want to kind of separate the games a little bit, but they want to also make them, the storylines mesh together yeah, is there, is there sure. ideal when i first heard of mrock i was just like you know okay here we go you know they just got another game coming out but the more you know you kind of research it and everything it seemed like um honestly it seemed like it was gonna be like they're tying in the same story so so gabe from mcoc the art director he had a post on twitter the other day because honestly it seemed like there was uh, some backlash out there about these characters being from mrock and bringing them into mcoc right and, you know i kind of understand everybody you know maybe maybe it's a little lazy here and there maybe they're just trying to maybe just advertise to mcoc characters right but um so in response to everybody he gave put out a, a post and he said you know just reinforcing what they had said a long time ago was that the only connection really and i'm just paraphrasing all this because you know you can just go check out his twitter right um but yeah so you know it's just going to be the same fictional universe so right. that's that's really the only the core connection he goes on to say you know they're just cool characters that you know they they make a cool character why not put them in both of the worlds because at the end of the day they, they're two completely different games and that's that's really what he goes on to say here is you're comparing apples to oranges because they're two separate games right i mean honestly personally i don't have much um experience with rpg games yeah you? very little uh i played uh dunger hunters champions with uh okay. dave for a little while uh that's pretty much about it you know i'm excited to learn kind of what's going on with this game and it'll be fun already 
knowing the backstory, like looking over uh, what they've already released, you can you can clearly see that there's a lot of tie in. Uh, like the pictures they've released, uh, you know, on social media and stuff has, you know, of all the different characters that are going to be in the different worlds. Right. Uh, factions. Factions. Guess, yeah. Two. And the, even though the, even though it's the same, um, same fictional universe, the makeup of how the characters are going to be built are different because yeah. you're going to be able to have a Hulk and put a skin on them and make this Hulk different than any other Hulk that, you ever played in the, in in Marvel Contest of Champions, or uh, take Black Panther, who is a female Black Panther look, look looking character, and put different skins and things like that on them. So it's going to be a completely different game. And I think a lot of people's fear is, oh, they're going to try to force us to play play this game. And it's like, no, it's not it. It's it's the shader same universe. If you play both games, that probably will help you understand the storylines better. But outside of that. I don't think they're going to think, think they're going to tie in anything from one game to the other like that. Yeah, I completely agree. And part of the other good side, like I think there's good side to it because I think for people who are out there making content and you know out there talking about the games and gives you something to think about, gives you something to do, you can you know kind of see the tie-in. So you'll be able to just make more content. There's more content out there. There's a bigger story, a broader storyline which honestly at the end of the day is more fun. Why do we like this game? Because it's Marvel characters, because we know Marvel characters. We really like Marvel characters. More of a story, awesome. more people to get engaged, more people to you know just enjoy the game on their terms. Right. And, you know, that's really what this community is all about, is everybody enjoying the game in their own way. And, and I, you know, I think they're doing a pretty good job at it these days, honestly. Yeah. I think they are. They're trying to find ways to make that life balance a little bit better. Uh, For sure. Are already on MCOC, and uh, I think MROC will continue that. And, and for those who want to play both games, play both games. And right. For those who don't, don't. Uh, I think I'm going to try it. I'm probably not going to give it any in-depth like I give MCOC because I'm already pretty much stuck in there and I, <laughs> yeah. with, uh, <laughs> with my, my characters and my build and, you know, being in an alliance and it's like, oh, it's a lot more attention. I have to give somewhere else. And I really don't want to give, you know, I feel like if I give it in another game any more attention, then I'm going to have to give up some sleep somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, you need that sleep. But yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm same there. So like, I've never really like been drawn into RPG games. So um, maybe this one will now it'll draw me in because I was never really into mobile games. And then I got into MCOC because it just tied me into the all, you know, I, I grew up playing like Street Fighter and Tekken and, you know, Killer Instinct. So I grew up playing all those games. So being older and being seeing these, you know, the new technology, it's on my phone and it's all these cool Marvel characters, you know, it's it, it drew me in. So maybe knowing the backstory and all that will draw me into Amrock, which, uh, you know, I think would be pretty cool. I'll give it a shot. Like I gave uh, Forge to fight. Remember the Transformers game? That's still out, right? I have never played it, um, but I heard it's another Kabam thing. I've heard good things about it. I've also heard some terrible things about it. But you know, it yeah. Is. So I, I played it when it first came out. Like I was excited. I did the the little beta, and then you know it kind of transferred over and. So I tried, it, it was cool. Like it had a lot of the same feel. One thing I think there, so I stopped playing because it just, it, it was it was more difficult in that. So you know how um, I'm like Labyrinth and stuff where you can't zoom out to see your path? Right. right? Well, that's how it, the Forge the Fight was behind you mm -hmm. and you couldn't see above. So it was like, our, you know, I guess RPG kind of third person mode, right? So your person was walking through this like field and you couldn't see the path. So like it was hard to remember the paths and you couldn't zoom out. And I, the, the fighting wasn't side to side. It was like around, you know, right? You could fight around in a kind of an arena. So it was cool, but it was just a lot. And since, you know, like you said, I had so much invested in MCOC. It was just hard to get into it. It's hard to get into something else. But, I mean, it, it seems cool. You know, the, it was fun. 
So we'll see what happens with MROC. Honestly, I think it'll be cool. You know, they've definitely stepped their game up a lot. Right. Uh, and already having Marvel, I think it'll be super fun. So I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, we'll get into it with all the news and try to keep up with it. Like, speaking of news, I think we got a little bit for it, right? Uh, this week, we're going to go over uh, their the first faction that they kind of released, the Patriot Garrison one. And that's the one where, you know, Peggy Carter, she's the president. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like it's all, you know, kind of you know, the whole American. She's got the Captain America shield right there next to yeah. her, kind of hidden down. And she's got her little, her shirt's kind of like a, a, a Captain America feel type uh, wardrobe. Yep. With a Nick Fury eye patch. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You got the Nick Fury eye patch. There you go. You got the tie in there. And yeah. then um, I like this. I, I really drawn into this statue that's like right in the middle of their little thing they got going on here. And it yeah. looks like Civil Warrior. You know, it clearly is a lot like Civil Warrior. And then if you look at, you know, there's some of their other, you know, vi- uh, pictures they've released and stuff. They, it's Civil Warrior. Right. You know, so obviously there's tie in there. And I think it's I, it looks pretty cool. They're like idolizing Civil Warrior. So. It'll be interesting to see how they tie that in because MCOC definitely doesn't idolize Civil Warrior. No. 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 <laughs> Not at all. No. But then sometimes when you zoom into this picture too, you can see like Captain America, like the model from MCOC in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Black Widow back there. It looks. Yeah. And the cool thing about the factions is okay, so Peggy, Peggy Carter is the president of the faction. Um, she's, I believe, a non-playable character. Um, oh, okay. Runs the faction. So she gives you guys, I think, I don't know if she gives the missions or gives the information out. Uh, okay. Each faction has something like this, uh, where there's going to be somebody in charge of the factions. Kind of tells you what to do. Just, yeah. I believe there are six or eight factions currently. And I think they want to expand to like 12 or 14. I could be wrong. I remember Gabe saying something about this a while back. Yeah, I was going to say that. I know they've built a bunch. Um, they've released like five so far, uh, at least on their like Twitter and some of their social feeds. But yeah, their first one that they released was the the Patriot Garrison. Right. Which, uh, you know, it's got the whole Captain America vibe to it. So that should be pretty fun. Interesting. So on this uh, picture, you can see, um, you know, they'll have like the society is a military republic. Right. So yeah. That'd be cool. I wonder how that's going to go. You have a president. Everything's going to be very military-esque. Land. Uh, so their little land, their little island of the faction is land of the free. Well, that makes a heck of a lot of sense, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, capital is Triskelion. Triskelion? Triskelion. Triskelion. Triskelion? Have you ever heard that word? Before? Uh, I have in one of the movies, I think. Okay. So it's a tie into something that was said said before. Uh-huh. And then Champion Super Soldier, so obviously that's, that's Captain America. Right? Well, it's going to be a Captain America figure like, yeah, that you'll be able to lay your different skins into mm-hmm. um, kind of and, and build them up. You, you, so it's kind of like how some people said, oh, I wish we could put armor on our champs in MCLC. Okay. To kind of like tie into some mastery type thing. And this is kind of how it's going to be there. Oh, there you go. So mastery builds would kind be like, like a mastery build with armor. So yeah. the armor, different armor you'll be able to put on them will we'll, we'll do something different for you. Like build up uh, your lock proficiency or, you know, give you more attack or give you some healing ability, stuff like that. Yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, I'm, I'm still waiting to see uh, the stuff about Spider Man. I didn't find anything about the whole spider. Spider Verse faction, you know, I think that'll be cool. I'm still looking to see that one. Um, but then the last little thing here was the goal of the Patriot Garrison faction uh, is freedom at all costs. So that's going to be interesting. Yeah. I'm excited to see what's going on with all these. Get into them. Time for a release date, actual gameplay, right? That'll be fun. Yeah. Out for the I'm Unrock. still all waiting on that one. All right. All right. You got any uh, more MROC news? I, I do not. That is all I know as far as Marvel MROC. All right. So uh, if we don't have any more MROC news, we'll just get into uh, you know some more some back to MCOC. We got a whole bunch of news about that. I mean, right. 
we could probably all talk for days <laughs> on <laughs> MCOC. But yeah, so uh, about Arena, we'll just kind of quickly go over some Arena updates. Uh, in our future shows, we'll probably have a little segment where we'll get into Arena a little bit more. But since you know this is our first one, we'll we'll just kind of briefly graze over it, if you will. Um, but so right now, you got what Terex just ended with Captain marvel and they changed her name now in the game i don't remember ever seeing that update or anything but it says carol danvers now carol danvers as yeah did you see that did not okay yeah no so like you know uh they'll all be captain marvel and then in parentheses you know it'd be like movie or right or whatever her says carol danvers now oh uh, okay yeah so that was she was what they they she came out a long time ago that was back when they were just like changing skins. They weren't even really changing characters. No, no, the characters just had different skins. Yeah, but no. So she was the basic one um, with Terax, which, you know, I mean, I don't really know. Terax obviously had a use, has a use on defense, it seems like. Uh, it doesn't really seem like they'll have much use. So good luck if you grinded for him. He seems definitely like a, uh, a defensive character. You know, yeah. somebody you'll want to have awakened for that okay. for that purpose. All right. Well, good luck if you grind for him. So, and that was round one. So we'll see what the that was round one, correct? Correct. Yeah. Right. So that was round one. So we'll see what they uh, all go for, and uh, you'll be able to go for round two, Monday through Thursday. Yep. And then after that, uh, we don't know who the you know I guess featured champ is going to be for uh the next arena but we do know based on uh you know it looks like uh you know turkos released a, a couple pictures or a picture here and it looks like they're the dates aren't aren't totally perfect but um it looks like elsa bloodstone is going to be the next basic uh, as a four star so honestly you know if you kind of look at all the popular demigod tiers or you know kind of uh ranking tiers out there if you will seton's is pretty uh, popular as his la legacies. So yeah, for uh, the tier list, you got Seton has her at uh, high demigod, you know, uh, so pretty useful if you're, you know, just, you know, if you're just starting out, you need to grind for, her. or, you know, if you like to collect her, honestly, I might grind just to kind of collect her because I don't have her in any star. Do you? How about Elsa? Yeah. I have her as a five star rank three. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. How is she? You, you play her man? Uh, only in arena. I I am figuring her out. She has uh, she she has what they call busted, busted or busting. It's kind of like a uh, debuff that gets placed on the uh, defender. Um, that uh, whenever it's kind of like a a debuff that allows your other debuffs, like your incinerates and your bleeds, to do more damage. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's her like uh, gun, right? Yeah, getting the blasts off. Getting right? the blast off there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, she's she was one. I when she came out, I was taking a break from the game, so uh, she's one where I wasn't really uh, too. I didn't really know much about her. I got her from a picture in one of my okay. one of my Doom attempts. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, I mean, I wasn't too upset about. I was like, oh, okay, well, I didn't get Doom, but I got Elsa, right. which is a new, yeah. it's a feature champ still, and, and, and a new champ. And when you get an out of five star or whatever, you know, that, you can't complain can't complain no all right so um yeah you know like i said we'll uh we'll go over arena more you know in kind of future episodes but yeah that's kind of our, our brief arena update if you will we, we did have arenas in prior to this one coming out we had um vision arcus with star lord which was the first time star lord's been back in the i think it's the first time he's ever been in the feature five star yeah i honestly i don't um, I can't recall a time because feature five star isn't that old. It's it's actually what last couple years, maybe a year, a yeah. year and a half, year something like that. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. So yeah, that's probably the first time. And that was also that coincided with him being released as a six star, right? Correct. The first time he was released as a six star inside the feature crystal, which I feel like a little late to the party, but hey, at the end of the day, he's still there. Still there. <laughs> We still don't have Scarlet Witch as a five, so. Well, right, she's going to be too powerful, which I, I don't understand that when you, you have Doom. 
right? Like, I mean, how is? I guess she's. From, I don't know. They say that what she does it makes her too powerful. I don't understand that at all. I, I just think they're waiting for it. But also, you know, the same way when you look through the game, it, the same way somebody I remember there was somebody who released a. Uh, I think it was Seton or somebody tweeted about the being the six star Star Lord, and they were like, "Oh, okay, you know, but we'll see. Maybe it was just a glitch, you know, when they re- when they updated the whole roster where you can kind of swipe if you didn't have them, right?" And somebody noticed that they had the six star one. Well, when you look at a rank up gem, like a 2015, 16 rank up gem, Scarlet Witch is in it for a five star. Right. Why would they? Why? Why do they do that? Maybe right. maybe they are going to release her. My guess is that they're going to release her, and it's like how Thor was at first, and uh, Doctor yeah. Strange and Abomination, uh, right? All in crystals. <laughs> Black Widow. Going to gonna have to. Yeah. Oh yeah. For right. sure. Going to have to pay some pay something to have them. Yeah. yeah. No. For sure. You know what? Speaking of OG Thor, I have I got an OG Thor, and I'm not mad at it. I, I have one as well. You know, well, I hope only a rank. I could have. I have two uh, two cosmic two cosmic stone or uh, awakening gems, but I was like, I'm not gonna sig them up, so I'm right. not liking them. <laughs> like I've seen, uh, you know, there's a couple of videos out there of people doing that, and they're more or less doing it because they already have like several rank three six stars, you know. So it's like a pet project, but yeah. it's like, oh, I can add him to my my my, my awakening collection. Yeah, he'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, no. So we'll see what they keep doing with these old school champs, and maybe somebody fun will be in the next featured basic or featured five star. Well, the next the next featured five star is not going to be for another almost three months. So this one this this one just came out this week. Which, if you haven't noticed, there's a change in the feature crystal. Uh, Doom is no longer in there. Uh, um, somebody else came out too. I don't know that, but uh, Silver Surfer still in there. Um, they also have um, Squirrel Girl. They have uh, who are some of the more recent champs that came out in the last year? Mojo. I was gonna say, no, so I, I got it pulled up right here. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, the feature five star crystal is a rough one. It's a rough one this time, I think. <laughs> but there are some, rough. yeah, there are some champs in there. Um, so I mean, just real quick, there's Red Skull. Nope. Um, you know. Yeah, Magneto, you know, who really wants him? Abomination, Electra, Doctor Strange. I mean, he's okay. Groot. Who would have wanted Groot, right? <laughs> you got uh, Punisher 2099. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Old Man Logan, which, you know, he's a fun one. I have him as a six star, and he's fun. He's cool. He does his That's thing. Free work. He's definitely a lot better. Um, yeah. You have champs in there like Iron Man Infinity War, Luke Cage. Massacre or uh, Massacre, depending on how you pronounce it. The crystal. There you go. And then you got Mojo. feature feature champs like Mojo, yeah. Mo Man, Nova, um, uh, Silver Surfer, Squirrel Girl. I would say you've been leaving out my boy. My boy is Longshot. A Longshot, yes. I got him. Probably, and he's probably the most he, hot person in that crystal. Outside oh of you're gosh. looking for a prestige bump, you go out he's and surfer. He is amazing. He doesn't have a great prestige, but I just kind of started to the whole prestige game. Um, but gosh, is he fun? He just melts people. Yeah, yeah, he's a lot of fun. People are he's, still, uh, he's gonna get tuned down. So but I, th- I think I think because he requires certain things, I think he's gonna be okay. I was gonna say like you know he. I mean, I feel like people thought. Human Torch for a second there were probably going to be toned down. He got a little tune up. He got a tune up, right? So that's pretty cool. I don't think anything really will change much with Longshot because sometimes Longshot is the worst champ to bring in. You know, right. like sometimes he does nothing and makes the fight longer. Like his punches don't do a whole hell of a lot. Like at ranks at rank five, you know, I have him at like a Sig hundred. I think you know he's critting at like two thousand. Like that's that's nothing for rank five, but. Right. They're incinerating, and if they get immune, or if they're um, if they get a bunch of buffs, like oh, it's just a, it's so satisfying to just watch them melt. It's just great. They just keep ticking, and little red thing ticks up, and then just die. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's a good time. 
I, I had a lot of luck. So I got, um, I you know, when they released those early access crystals, mm -hmm. um, I tried for Geeting, got and duped her in one. Oh, okay. So lucky. I was like, I mean, I got to try again. So, and then that's when I got a uh, long shot. Yeah, I don't, I had to stop doing the early access crystals. They were, uh, I got Omega Red. And I was like, oh, and then from that point, I, I didn't get anybody else. I was like, nope, no more. No more will I do these. Fair. Yeah, no, I tried for uh, Mojo and got all like three stars. Yeah, so. yeah that's, that's that's kind of demoralizing when you. <laughs> I, I got two really good ones in a row, and I'm like, you know what? I should probably not do that anymore. <laughs> Gotten a dupe and then a get. And then since my Mystic Pool really is kind of just very lackluster uh -huh. they had so many mystic race resources to just get him to rank five like that weekend i think so that was pretty cool i love long shot he's definitely a lot of fun yep yeah, seems like a lot of fun don't have him yet i've seen a lot of gameplay from him, but don't have him yet but yeah so and that's the feature five star and that's gonna go for a while so we'll see how that goes you got the next three months two two months and some change to to get into that if you want to get into there um, let's see. I think we have one more news thing. Oh, yeah, we had um, an Alliance War issue uh, that kind of started actually a few weeks back that's a was affecting this past week that's now now resolved. Um, we had that war, was it War 5 or War 6, where people were getting kicked out of the war? Uh, yeah, so for, were people getting kicked out? I think it was... Out of, just, not of the uh, war itself, but they were getting kicked out of, like, uh, the enlistment or the... Uh, well, in placement only lasts like three minutes. Yeah, placement wasn't lasting long. It was like no, it was like three minutes. Yeah. And I mean, my alliance didn't have the issue. Mine didn't all. either. Kind of went on just the same. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, no, that would definitely uh, the war. Waiting for those rewards. That really sucked, man. <laughs> that was a it, it changed it changed it. So so here's the thing when when you're talking about waiting for the rewards, and yeah, they came out with the end of this AQ, which kind of helped minimize the blow a little bit but when yeah. you're talking about waiting on rewards usually at the end of the alliance war season there's a lot of movement for uh, sure people are looking for new alliances people are retiring people are stepping down but everybody's waiting on the rewards and you can't leave the alliance until the rewards come in because if you leave before the rewards come in then you're gonna you're not gonna get them and so all the work you put in is for not uh, it makes it so hard for alliance leaders people moving yeah. I mean, I know for one, uh, I mean, at one point I was, you know, in between seasons, I was leading like three or four alliances and moving just, I mean, just even just one, just moving people from one. And then there's so many people out there who, um, you know, say on Monday that, yeah, I'll join your alliance when we get the rewards. Yeah. And then come Tuesday, they're like, what? Uh, no, man, I already joined this I, I found another one already. Yeah, I, did. I went through that as a leader myself. Oh, like, my and then like a week later, they're like, hey, you still got a spot? Yeah, yeah. They know who I thought they were. You got a spot. Yeah. I like to come, come join you. you know, so, gosh, that makes it so difficult for, uh, you know, alliance leaders when you have to wait for these. But, you know, I feel like a lot of people probably just kind of took the break off, got a lot of their own content cleared and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I guess it was probably... It was all right. But yeah, no, I was waiting. I was just waiting for him to drop so I could finally rank five my Warlock. Well, I, I got the rewards. I was one of those people who was waiting to move um, okay. because I went to go back to go help a, a, a friend, a friend's alliance, um, which the alliance I was in was, was Scrolls. And I love those guys. So if any of you guys are listening, I left very hesitantly because you guys have been great. Uh, but I, I did. The other guys, a friend who needed, you know, they, they were going through some big changes and needed some people that they could rely on to help with those changes. So he hit me up and I can't say no because he's done a lot for me in the past. So <laughs> in, wasn't that the one you were leading? Uh, I left scrolls. I left scrolls. No, you were going too. I went to dorks. Yeah. And wasn't that, didn't you had lead that at one point? I, I led the. Okay, so Dorks is like kind of like the uh, symbi symbiotic empire is a family of family of alliances. I ran oh, okay. I ran Dork one, um, and then there's Dork two, Dork three, Dork four, and Dork R, and then there's main okay. Dorks. Uh, we we call it main Dorks, but it's just Dorks with the S. Yeah, um, <laughs> and that's where 
Dave initially started the Dork Family Alliance. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So I went. So it's the Dorks and the the Symbiotic Empire coming together in this podcast. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. We'll have to get like a a, a Venom Dork or something. <laughs> <laughs> Venomized Dork. Venomized Dork. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I I I left the, the empire to go start Dork One. So, oh, okay. All yeah, right. I, I was in. Yeah, no, I was in. And you stuck around. It's been cool having you. You know, stick around. You were great. And what you were in, um, Planet, Planet uh, of the Symbiote. Symbiote. Planet of the Symbiote. Yeah. Yeah. So you were two one four PS. Yeah. Yep. That was the first one. That was the main. That was the first thing that started it all. I didn't start it. Um, a, a group of people did start it. Um, and then, you know, you know, worked my way. I've gotten the officer and then everybody just, you know, just kind of stopped playing and stuff. And I just enjoyed it so much and just saw the dream to the end, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know one of the guys that I actually knew before. I didn't know that he was in, in the Planet of the Sims, but I'd seen his YouTube page prior. Um, and that was uh, Humble. And when he finally oh, yeah. when he finally stepped away, oh, he's uh, great. Yeah, he was awesome. Hey, dude, his, his son was his son was better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his son's doing the best too. Right? right, he was. Oh gosh, yeah, he, he, could, he definitely he was awesome. I always said our best person was a twelve year old. <laughs> you know, in, in an alliance full of men. It gave such a self a hard time when he uh, when he didn't when he didn't uh, do well. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I know, dude. It was crazy. Uh, but yeah, no, he was always, uh, he was always, I, gosh, he had a rank, he had the first like rank four, uh, like Hyperion. I would just remember watching him just tear through Alliance Quest back in the day. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, no, he, he had a cool channel. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Humble and Dub. Yeah, but the, uh, yeah, Humble and Dub. <laughs> uh, yeah, but the, uh, so by now you should have received your, uh, your award awards. Um, they also compensated people for prior to that, a few days before that, they compensated everybody for that war. Uh, they gave, basically gave everybody a win, um, giving yeah. out the rewards for whatever tier you were in during that time. Um, so you should have got that, which was pretty cool because they could have just said no rewards and, and moved on. Um, You're working on it. Yep. And then, um, yeah, then they put out the announcement. They needed about a week. It didn't take a full week. Uh, yeah, what well, they said it was going to take up to a up to a week, and they, they they actually got it done in about four days. So, kudos yeah. kudos to Kabam on that that getting it done as fast as it, and kind of keeping it in line with AQ because most people would have stayed through AQ anyway, so Fair. the movement wouldn't have been been as bad as I mean. Before. I wonder if not not did it on purpose, but looking back at it, you know, having it on a Friday, everybody's on the weekend. It's, t- it's easier to move alliances on the weekend. <laughs> Not everybody's working and everything like yeah. that. So, yeah. I mean, I guess it all worked out in the end. Um, but yeah, so that was I think that, what was I think going on. We had, yeah. I mean, I thought I thought the, um, you know, as far as like kind of looking back at the month that was, yeah. uh, the updating Act One, Act One rewards. Yeah, the uh, updated Act One. Uh, you know, um, you know, like I said, you know, kind of growing and building the community, I would start with a, a small account and build it up with other people because I just kind of thought that was the best. But it was really hard. There was there was these gaps that you hit as a as a, you know, as a summoner. And it, it's hard to go to the next one. It's hard to, you know, you, you're too good for where you're at. So I feel like it seems like and even just from this post that, um, you know, Kabam Mike had said that it's really just it's it's just the beginning of them um, updating Act rewards. So well, I mean, hopefully, you got to think about it. When the game came out five years ago, these rewards were acceptable. Oh yeah, no, yeah. exactly. But you know, and, and that's they, why they need to be retuned and refreshed. And, and it's awesome that they're doing it. You know, I feel I don't know why it takes so long, but I guess research or there's yeah. another. Stuff. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I never made a mobile video game, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I thought that was really cool. You know, just yeah, it, it kind of, I, I think they're going to help bridge that gap. You know, I think you'll, you'll, you'll get stuck into the game. You know, you'll be more satisfied moving forward, especially when you see all these videos of everybody being so far, it won't take long. I don't think to get back up to that or, you know, get up to that point. Right. 
think that's pretty cool. Um, and then, so the Mole Man excursions. Wait, I, 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 I never have to find another Mole Man ever again. Oh, gosh, I know. And right? I always did Epic. So those who did more than Epic, I, I don't know how you did it. So I did, I did Epic, Master, and Heroic. Oh. Um, Heroic, I mainly just uh, did auto fight, you know, just while I was like, kind of doing other stuff, you know, working on this and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, oh, my gosh. I mean, it was just – it was so boring and so long paths. And, I mean, if you have accounts like ours, I don't think even Epic was was very difficult. That's what was difficult about it, and, and that was the good thing. It was no energy. The the, the level up was not hard. Um, the rewards were, rewards were nice. It was just so time-consuming, especially the last the third and the fourth week. We were like, was it 16, 16 paths per? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so painful. Um, did you use just like one specific team or did you uh, change team? I think I changed it up just so I'd get some variety in there. Um, one time I used, I don't know I've used Tomb and Torch, I used Clairvoyant, I used Corvus, I used Omega, I used Tavik, Warlock, um, Gulk. Uh, did I use Thing? I think I used Thing one time with Human Torch. Yeah, so there's a lot of, di- a lot of different teams in there that you know, that's if, if you wanted to learn how to use a champ, that was probably a good place to learn how to use a champ. For sure. Yeah. So somebody like Ghost who's, who takes a, a different rhythm to learn, if you if you had just pulled her, you could take her in there and learn how to use her. And if For you sure. get up, guess what? You can back out. It didn't cost you any energy, and you can go back in. No, and I thought that that was definitely, like, there were definitely some pros to it. I thought another pro was, like, so if you were on the cusp of, say, uh, Master and Epic, right? Mm-hmm. It didn't take, it wasn't really a stressful way to go down one path. You know, you only had what, three fights and then Mole Man. And I think, Mole Man, you know, ambush. Yeah. I mean, Man, you're like, oh, not another Mole Man. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I think it was, you know, like for somebody, you know, on that cusp, like if you just needed a couple shards or if you wanted to go down a path or, you know, you get ramped up, you can use some boosts and get through it. And, and yeah, so I thought, I thought it had its pros, but yeah, no, it definitely. And I, you know, this whole releasing things once a week yeah. throughout the month is. I thought that was good. Actually. I actually liked that. I, I thought, again, I thought it had its pros and cons. It was cool because it gives you something to do every week and it kind of gives you, right. you're not done, not doing anything. Right. That, that on top of look how many past the last week was, if they would have released that, most people would have quit after the first week. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> they are all of them be like, "What's this last quest?" Ah, oh, oh, sixteen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. No, that's a lot of point. Uh, that's a fair point. I, I, so I've, I always felt like you know you got to give a little to get a little, and it was free energy, a lot of items, shards, and pieces out there. Uh, they helped you with rank up material or getting crystal shards. And in the end, you had to give up some time. That's what it basically boiled down to. Really? Yep. Yep. Just a lot of time and mind numbing fights with the mole man. <laughs> uh, but, you know, also, what else happened? I totally forgot about it. But the International Women's Day boss rush, that happened last month. Yeah, that was last month. That was cool. Um, we had uh, five, was it five women? Six. So there was six. So it was Starfighter. Uh, 0717. You got Cat Murdoch. Cat Murdoch with Dragon. Trust. Cat does great pictures. If you haven't followed Quack Cat on Twitter, you need to follow Cat on Twitter. She does great MCLC pictures. I'm looking at the one right now that she made of all the of all the gals together, and uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and then you got Miss Insomnia. Insomnia. Uh, it, it, the, Grant, what you had to do with Miss Insomnia was Miss Insomnia needed to be sitting on the ground with her feet crossed playing the game. That would have been okay. a better than Miss Insomnia if she did that one. Is that like how is that? Yeah, well, if if you uh, watch last year's, um, uh, what was that? The challenge that they had with uh, every week they had somebody come in for uh, three three people come in every week for nine weeks, and then those okay. then nine winners. Well, Miss Samia took her, you know, took him and sat down on the on the ground on the couch and right. playing the game. She did the same thing at NYCC. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I you know what's crazy is I feel so. 
like out of the loop of all of it because I've been playing the game so much, but I was so focused on like the community and stuff that like, I feel so like out of the loop with the whole Comic-Con. And, like, yeah, the Comic-Con like, thing is cool. It's sad that it's probably, it's, it's really, really good shot that it's not going to happen this year. Um, I, was, I was really looking forward to going this year. Um, yeah, so we had this Insomnia, we had uh, Katie Candy, uh, and then we had uh, Dragon Fay. Uh, who's uh, also part of the uh, UMCOC podcast, uh, who, um, who who did design the domino fight on the last boss rush with the UMC group. Um, so <laughs> she promised not to make it as difficult as that domino, and she didn't. They, I thought they were all worth thought out fights. Uh, none of them were too difficult, and they were all able to be done with 550 champs. Oh, and Laura, and, Laura, and we all know Grant from the uh, content champion's wife, Brian Grant. Um, there you go. So Laura had the uh, start off with the uh, X23 fight, which was really nice and simple. Uh, she wanted to make it easy for that. Anybody can go in there and do that fight. And that's what that was. That's cool. Yeah, no, I, you know, I had no idea that it was that they, you know, they had enlisted, you know, community members to kind of build them and stuff. And I thought it was cool. I thought that it was, it was cool. Like I said, I felt like I was out of touch, but now it seems like they're super, you know, like it seems like everybody is in touch. So it was just me. But um, it's super cool seeing that. Yeah. And, you know, I thought they were actually I thought they were super well designed because they could have been tough. Like some of them were like the first times I, you know, because I'm not one who reads nodes, which no probably should. What what are nodes? <laughs> exactly. Right. They're just a champ in front of you. You're try to knock it down. Yeah. That, right. Exactly. Um, uh, so. But yeah. So I, I, a couple of them, there was it was just tough. I think what it was the. um Emma, right? KD Candy, right? Emma, like that was that. I thought that tough. That fight was tough the first time without reading the note. You know, I mean, you, then you read the note and it was super fun, yeah. but uh, super well done. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was great. Yeah, well done. It was a well done design fight by each one of them. Uh, For sure. I uh, took out uh, Starfighters uh, uh, Black Widow Clairvoyant. She was the uh, final boss, and I I took that out with Human Torch. So. Okay. I ranked two of them, so it was it was great. <laughs> <laughs> so, in true Jerry Springer fashion, I'd like to leave y'all with a final thought. Uh, and today, this final thought is going to be being thankful. Uh, this morning, we tweeted about seeing Who to Awaken video. I must say that I am thankful for those. Spending most of my time building a community, I didn't have time to learn the ins and outs of all the champs and of the MCOC. I relied heavily on his videos and those of the other content creators out there. Dork Lessons, Bridge the Man, Dan with Frontline, the UMCOC folks, BG, all of those, super thankful for. Uh, and the same aspect of relying heavily on those people in the, in the game and everything, I relied heavily on um, the officers with, you know, helping me build the community and everything like that. Um, you know, if it wasn't for them, if it wasn't for such all those awesome peaceful people in that community, it wouldn't be what it was. So super thankful for that as well. And also just kind of in general, I'm thankful for the game and the community of all of this game. Uh, it's filled with amazing people. And um, I think it's it's pretty cool, especially in the times we're in now, people are putting some pretty cool content out there. So uh, I'm excited about it. And just kind of lastly, uh, in, the, in this time where we're all kind of like hanging out at home, I mean, I know, Everybody's got those essential jobs. I know you do, Ghost Dog, and uh, we're all. I'm thankful for all the people out there doing those essential jobs. You know, uh, you guys are making the world keep going. So when we get out of this, that we can actually get back to life as it was. But um, I'd also like to thank my family and my girlfriend. Being quarantined with them, I, I wouldn't be able to be quarantined with anybody else. So um, thanks. <laughs> Did you have any uh, anything you wanted to leave them off? With? You know what? Uh, along the same lines, I was an alliance leader, uh, so your officers helped make or break your alliance. Uh, so, Randorks won for a year, and it was a good year. Um, we had a lot of fun. We had some ups, we had some downs, but I could have done it without them. Um, so, appreciate to for those who haven't or are not alliance leaders, show some appreciation to your alliance leaders and your officers. For all the work they put in for the you know helping th getting things set up things like that it's a thankless position because it's a game <laughs> that, do that we don't get paid for uh we, those people put those that little extra time and effort into their 
Um, but outside of that, uh, everybody be safe. Uh, we got this time of quarantine going on. Um, some people have to get out. Some people have to stay in. Everybody has to do their part, though, so we can get back to uh, what we what we were prior to all this. And I think that's pretty much all I got. Cool. All right, man. Well, everybody out there, be safe. Happy grinding out there. May the RNG be kind. Thank you.